Good evening, and welcome to the latest episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Lock Fox, and this is all of the market news you need to know going into the weekend for Eve Online. Uh, let's go ahead and get start get started where we usually do. Talk about some quick show news to the dulcet, uh, relaxing view of the Gita 44 station. Um, I want to thank everyone who is tuned in live on both Twitch and YouTube. Uh, we are we are live every Friday night, 0300 Eve time. That's Thursday night U.S. time. And you can catch us every single week. If you want to follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and our blog. And uh, do come and join us on our Discord. Links to join should be down in the doobly-doo below. That is the very best place to get in touch with me. Um, I also want to put a big shout out once again every week to our editor, Chris Mellon, who makes sure that this show gets to you guys on YouTube uh, nice and condensed with all of my faffing about removed, uh, just distilling that down to the best parts. So uh, got to thank him. And you got to go check out his new Minor Metrics show, which, again, links are down in the doobly-doo on how to watch that. Um, next, I want to thank our – well, actually, no, before we go on there. Next, I do want to point out, if you guys weren't following us on Twitter this week, I did release a new API. Uh, we are now releasing both OHLC feeds for you uh, TA fiends and a profit feed where we try to guess what the next 120 days worth of uh, stuff is going to be. And the the... News for that is going to be all I'm going to have a blog out soon. Uh, I'm trying to write it so it's actually interesting. It's super dry. Um, but you guys should be you guys should be enjoying some much better forecasts from uh, your favorite platforms. I've gone ahead and tried to include as many of the of the Eve market uh, dev fleet guys as I possibly can in that. So more news as it becomes available. Um, last, before we get started, I want to thank our patrons directly. They are the ones who keep this show on the air every week, ad free, no gating. They keep us in server hardware. They keep us in software. Uh, they keep me developing the cool tools for you guys. And, uh, they make this show, uh, make it so I don't have to justify to my wife what, uh, what I'm wasting my time on. Uh, so I got to thank all of our, thank all of our patrons. Even if you're only, even if you can only throw a buck in the jar, it means a whole ton. Um, if you want to buy me a beer, that is the best way to do so. If you can't support us directly, if you won't support us directly, that is perfectly fine. Do make sure you're getting subscribed though, because like every good market guy, I like seeing numbers going up and to the right. So do get subscribed, do follow us on Twitter, do join us, join our discord and do watch the show every week and do share it with your corpies because, uh, if we all know what's going on, the world will be a better place. So with that, Let's go ahead and get right into the show. And we're going to go right into it because CSM is closed. And I know you bitter guys who keep posting in the comments about how bitter you are about CSM and did not vote. Well, too bad voting's closed, so there's nothing more to complain about. Stop complaining about it. Um, we see that Plex has crossed the 1.2 billion mark. Once again, and hype is high, but volumes are low. Um, as we see the price climb and climb and climb, we still see not a lot going on in the actual units traded. Zooming all the way out, we can see a pretty decent amount of depression here between just a couple weeks ago and now. I think these high prices are keeping people at home uh, and keeping people out of the market. It's extremely hot at the moment and just keeps climbing. Now, uh, just six hours before this show started, uh, it was announced that CCP is running a 15% off Plex sale this weekend all the way through, I believe, the start of FanFest. Uh, actually, I think it ends April 2nd, I want to say, um, and FanFest is the 6th. So... Uh, this would be a great time to stock up and get some of those high prices. If we zoom all the way in, again, we see we are pretty lean on supply is really the problem going on here. So at one, two, five billion, this is a great time to be cashing out, to be getting that liquid cash. If you're going to work with it, 
Um, and honestly, so this is the part where I'm going to put my foot in my mouth, just, just whole hog and say that I think this is really the peak and watch me eat, you know, eat shit and end up, end up the peak is at 1.3. Um, it's a little, it's a little bit hard to call the peak right now. Um, because between the Plex sale with downward pressure and the pre fan fest hype with upward pressure, it's kind of hard to figure out who's going to win in that particular, uh, argument. Um, especially since with everybody traveling to fan fest and thinking about fan fest, uh, the activity numbers tend to droop a little bit. We saw something similar during Eve Vegas. So we might be seeing that the low traffic plus the hype, uh, is enough to boost, boost the, the prices up to one, three, um, ahead of ahead of fan fest and then once fan fest launches and and we actually see the release schedule have things settle back down so um it's it's a bit of a weird spot to bet to to think and i still i still worry that once the plex split hits we're still going to be in for a decent dive so if you're going to be working with the money I would be I would be seriously weighing the chance to get cashed out. And if you don't need it for if you don't need it for omega status, if you don't need it as as its token and you'd rather have the cash, now's a decent time as any to get that cash. Um I think that we're still in for a sub billion once the once the Plex split happens. I expect the Plex split before June 3rd, though I just can't tell you when before June 3rd. And uh, especially with all the new mining platforms that'll come out, I think that's going to bomb cash stocks. So if you're needing cash, if you're looking for something to do in the next six weeks, I think this is the chance to, to cash out on Plex. Again, Watch me eat my foot and we get up to one three and I'm sorry if that happens, but this is, this is what the numbers say to me. Uh, this is, this is as good as I can divinate given, given the, given the data. Looking at the rest of the RMT market, uh, we saw a big reset in resculpt certificates as people were looking to, uh, boost off of the RM the the maybe liquidate some of that uh spare aurum and then dumped real hard afterwards not that it's still not breaking my my graph at the moment uh zooming in on skill trading uh as price we see that prices are climbing in cost here on the parity line and profits are staying relatively stable even dipping a little bit um i did expect that the Roracle, uh, Roracle liquef- liquefaction was going to subside. Uh, we saw that the Roracle nerf hits and prices took a pretty deep dive and then sta- stabilized. Um, and if we zoom in, we can see that supplies have returned back to their about 1K level. So I would expect positive pressure, especially with how much positive pressure is coming up through Plex, that we're only at 680 and not at 700 is a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, I don't know if this is a great chance to jump on, though, because as you can see, the no matter how how funny the supply gets and no matter pretty much inelastic to cost, the prices stay pretty stable. So this isn't a really hard spot to predict, unfortunately. But it's not a bad chance to buy up some quick buy orders, uh, try to ride some of the uh, Plex Plex instability into the weekend. Um, This might be a decent hedge against a Plex move, moving from Plex out into skill injectors. That's a little bit more of a risky move, unfortunately, so I wouldn't say that. But... um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's weird. I think that, I think that they're undervalued at the moment. I just don't know if they're gonna pop the way that they really should. 
Moving on to our market indexes, uh, looking at net trade, we are down basically across the board for all of the extra price rise that we're seeing. Total net trade, as in uh, cost times units moved, has been dropping. We see it also in skill trading uh, as, as the volumes have shed. We see the things staying steady in the material markets, uh, despite the nerf, uh, we're actually back to pre-nerf levels, uh, looking re relatively stable. And as prices rise, I actually expect this to be just a little bit higher than it is. Um, and the ship numbers keep, keep sagging. And this is, this is starting to get into territory where I'm getting cranky because, uh, we're almost sub ascension and, I don't really think that I, I, with Eve at free to play, I would sort of hope that Ascension, the values at Ascension were the floor in this case. Uh, I'd like to think that activity levels at Ascension, you know, we have a big discontinuity, the world changed, you know, when the Fire Nation attacked and get uh, higher, higher activity levels that were this, this week on ships speaks to how productive people are how much that is destroying your your margins for how productive people are, but I don't think that there's enough demand to soak up all of that supply. <clears throat> Next, looking at the PVP numbers, again, we're seeing things staying weak in the, in the PVP numbers, not as weak as the ship numbers would make us think. Um, still a decent number of kills at about 15 K a day, uh, still a decent amount of, of destruction at about a trillion a day. I'd like to see that higher though. I really think we need to be at 1.2 trillion to really eat the sort of, uh, supply we're generating. Actually, I think we need to be up closer to 1.5 trillion, but I don't think anybody is, uh, I don't think anybody is risk, uh, risk tolerant enough to start losing that kind of money. So, uh, that's, uh, that's at least where we are. It's weaker than I'd like to see. It's not catastrophic. I just, destruction drives the market and without consumption really driving things, I, I get queasy as an, as a, uh, economy guy. Moving on to minerals. Minerals are staying uh, relatively interesting this week. We saw Tritanium pe uh, peak up to 1.4, and now it is back down to 1.2. Excuse me, 4.2. And volumes are a little bit anemic. Not really much to say to say on that front. Uh, supplies are staying steady at the 40 billion mark. We're seeing a big buyout, what this looks like. Uh, driving a spike up to 4.5 in the last few hours. So this is not reflected in those graphs yet. Uh, I still, I would, I'd be really careful about jumping on this. If you have some 4.0 Tritanium, I mean, sell it 4.5, get your 10%. But the this, I think, is, I, I don't think this can be sustained unless we see a sustained reduction in supply. I think we're seeing at 40 billion units, uh, even at 35 billion units, I expect the price to be closer to 425 in the longer term. Next, Pyrite, which has been bouncing around 6.0 and 5.5 for the last week, is trending up. In fact, if you were watching minor metrics, this would actually be probably a buy order uh, just by the technicals alone. Um, zooming in though, I still think the supplies are pretty hot and this would be a good chance to get burned. Unfortunately, um, the, the su supply lines are still at seven and a half billion. And I, I think that we're going to stay in this, uh, 5.5 regime going forward. I, if we see another buyout, we could get to six, but there's not, there's really not enough movement there. You'd have to have somebody do a big buyout of like 2 billion units to really get us up to six, uh, get us over the six line. And it's, uh, again, it, getting that 10% that I really think is worth speculating on. Like, I don't, I don't want to tell you guys to speculate on anything that's sub 10% because you're going to lose 4% to taxes. You're going to lose, uh, you need a 2% buffer for uh, laziness or uh, family emergencies, 
maybe even more. And then you're just playing with four or 5% when you talk about it at the very end. And like, you can make money doing that. I just, I just think that there needs to be some, some margin in there. And I, I don't think that, that play, I don't think there's enough room in Pyrite to play that game. Next, Mexilon, which has been on a tear recently, is subsiding down sub-80, uh, looking almost like a, another buy here at 80. Um, ahead of FanFest, this is probably your best chance to get on the train. Um, I would be looking for some op- opportunistic buy orders down in the 75, sub-75, maybe be playing the buy orders outside of Jita trying to pick up any of this stuff that's anywhere close to 70 and wait for wait for the the presentations at FanFest. Um, we have seen in the past where Capital News spiked Mexilon. And like I said, I think this is your best bet to get on the hype train. And if you don't get on the if you don't get on the train this weekend, I would I you you're either going to feel like a genius because nothing happens or you're going to feel like an idiot because you missed out on a, on a great chance to make uh, a free 10%. So this is, this is my advice here. I think there's opportunity to get to 85. Um, maybe if you're watching this super closely, get to 90, but it relies on the devs talking about capitals and maybe talking about more solve warfare stuff, driving things and the i don't i don't see enough things like it's going to be a it's going to be a coin flip whether whether that gets to be an opportunity so in this case you need as much margin to play with to 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 make your money so like i said i'd be aiming for an order as close to 70 as i could get it uh something in a 75 is even a little bit high for jumping in at this point um but Again, if you want to jump in, now is the chance to jump in. Isogen, my favorite mon- mineral to shit on, is trending back down to 50. And supplies are coming back a little bit, uh, suggesting that we might get to 52 in the next week or two. Uh, but again, I have not liked playing with Isogen for the last six months. Like, I, I shouldn't even talk about it on the show that I'm just predisposed to believe that Isogen is crap and I don't have anything nice to say about it. So we're going to move on. Noxium uh, has been interesting the last couple of weeks. Peaking up to 360 has taken back some of those gains. Uh, we can see the the sort of technical you'd be watching here in this case was this RSI saying that we were too hot too fast. But the and we've we've gone ahead and backed off that peak over 360 uh, but we're still in pretty hot territory zooming in we're we're looking like uh, this is again another coin toss where 50 percent says that the supplies stay the same and prices rise up to maybe the 375 mark probably the 370 mark and if you were buying in this uh, three two five buy order, you might be able to make your margin. Uh, or we we get back to the two hundred million, we come under the three fifty, and we stay under three fifty. So I don't think this is as good a place to speculate. This is a much larger gamble, and I don't think the the positives of that gamble are enough to pay off. So I wouldn't jump on Noxium. Next, Zydrine is staying steady right at about 1,000. Uh, I think this is people just wanting it to stay high. Please, oh, please don't ruin our Zydrine margins. It'll kill our ISK per hour efficiency. Um, zooming in, though, we still see extremely high supplies at over 200 million units. And we can see that the the buy floor keeps dropping out under the 9.5 mark. So, um I think this is a reasonably okay thing to speculate in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I wouldn't be waiting for anything at FanFest for it. Uh, there are There's a non-zero but very slim chance that the technicals about the, the drilling platform roids comes out. And uh, that could... 
that could dump the things either way. Um, without knowing what the what the moon roids will be made out of, there is risk that there is risk that there could be extra there could be shocks in the high end mineral supply along with it. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they are that these these new these new moon rocks are more a mixture of intermediate stuff so you get I, what I what I'd love to see is you know you frack one of these rocks and you get you get this stupid mix of like eight different minerals materials and some of them reprocess down to raw so you get stuff that's like a good vein and you get you get just raw dysprosium and raw technetium and then you get some maybe some some reacted components in there that that would make maybe help you fill out 10 or 15% of your reaction chain and then i'd love another set that needs more refinement so that you have to like add one more one more processing step to your chain and do and and so you you might have the chance that you skip a step and you might have the chance that you add a step on both sides would be my perfect perfect world um we'll see if that actually happens i seriously doubt that i don't think anybody else other than me is talking about that so uh i will just sit on my quiet lonely soapbox and preach uh about the way i would be if it if i were ccp lockfox this is what i would do um but there is a non-zero chance that if traditional ABC ores are in these fracked materials, that we could see extra supply come to the market, really trashing this price. So if you're going to play in the, if you're going to play this game, be ready to press sell and get the hell out. I would make sure I would be out of this if we ever drop below one K and just, just nope, we're right the hell out of there. Otherwise, you're playing Catch the Falling Knife. And there's money to be made, just it's hard. And I it's a it's a tough game to play. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to have the general the general audience here trying to play that game. Next is Megasite, which took a big nosedive this last week, but has been staying steady around 1400. Uh, again, zooming in, we see a big supply glut. And just this wish that the price will stay high with these buy orders crashing through to 1.1K. So again, this is why I tell you guys to get opportunistic buy orders in, is that if you were playing this game and you're you're saying, okay, well, 1400 is my sell target. And if I move back, move back to, let's say, 13, uh, 12, uh, something in a 1250, and I just put some buy orders there. Well, guess what? As we crash through those floors, your buy order gets gets snatched up. And now you have this much margin to play with when everyone else who's day trading is playing with this little bit of margin. And or or even if we go to the worst thing, like they're playing with this really, really thin margin here. And you get to play with the extra with the extra margin because you were so smart. So this is why I talk so much about these opportunistic buy orders, because there are some excellent opportunities to get some really big deals in these weak markets and turn them around really quick. And you just have to have the tools set up right. So you're not your order is never supposed to be this top order. It's always down here, and as we crash through it, yours gets fulfilled. You sell up here. You get to make money off of this, where everybody else has to make money off of this. So, TLDR. Next, Morphite is just taking a nosedive. Oh, my God. So, uh, this is this is actually starting to hurt my ego a little bit. That the... the uh, again, you... I've, I've said this every week. If it's sub 10K, you should buy it. But now we're at 9K and we're still falling. And supplies are staying steady, but prices keep tanking. So I I hate that I've told people to buy in at 9, 9.8 or 9.5. And you guys are way up here and losing money and negative, you know, negative net worth for, for all of this long-term, oh, oh, saving for a rainy day thing. 
Um, this is this is really starting to piss me off when it comes to the the tech two market. Is that this is indicative in my book that we really need some large scale war that we're just not seeing the tech to consumption on the same level as the generally static supply. Even with the Rourke boost, we stay steady at 9 million units. And I know before you start writing, writing that mean comment in the chat is that I do know that Rourke's can't mine Mercrocks it, but the, the, extra supply like we haven't seen extra supply quote unquote we've we just see this slump in demand and there's just so much of this product getting churned out and not enough things eating it and that just depresses the crap out of me and this is what has me worried for the moon mining is that i don't see how they reduce the overall supply given that they're going to make it a more active system, like by definition, you, 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 you would at least have to hit the, like you, you, so if, if a money moon makes, let's say 2 billion a month, and that's a really conservative estimate, money moon makes 2 billion a month. And you don't have to do jack shit to earn that 2 billion a month. You put fuel in it. You, you, um, you come back every every couple of weeks to 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 clear stuff up. You make sure that nobody's siphoning your shit. You basically get a free two billion esque right off the bat, zero effort. So your moon mine your your moon mining operation stops on the day that the new stuff launches, and now you have to put active you have to put active ships out in out in belts to mine this stuff. So. How much do you think that that you have to make a month in that? How much do you have to make every you'd, you'd have to make that at least a week to pay for the number of people who have to deal with it. And there just isn't the demand in the tech two markets. So either we have to amp the cost in the material cost in tech two, which I don't think is the right right answer. Or we have to completely trash the the supply chain, and I don't think that's really going to be the answer. Uh, and I'm super conflicted. I'm not sure. We'll see in Fan Fest. I'm sure Fozzie's going to prove me wrong. But like we saw, we saw the change with Roracles bring so much more minerals to bear, and that's fine. The, the Tech One minerals mineral picture is a much wider ocean to spread all of that extra supply over. And there's something to be said about having the price of every Tech One item thanks to all of this uh, glut of supply. Um, in fact, there's even something to be said for, for over flooding the market with this stuff so that it soaks up, um, it soaks up liquidity. But... The the problem isn't isn't the price. The problem isn't the the end end of the day price of the thing. The problem is the actual consumption rate of those things. That 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 it doesn't ma Like I don't really give a shit what the price of something is week over week. What I care is is as a producer, am I going to hit my margins? Uh, because no margin, no work. And number two, am I going to, is that, is that new material going to get destroyed? Because we talk and we talk and we talk about ISK faucets and sinks, but there are also mineral faucets and sinks. There are moon goo faucets and sinks. And each of these products may not be strict currency, but they do need to be balanced. And I just worry about pumping in a whole bunch of extra supply into these markets and just not having the demand to soak it up. Now, this might be their brilliant idea. This might be Fozzie's master plan is to cut tech two, tech two margins in half and make it so that uh, so that the, the difference between a, cru a faction cruiser and a tech two cruiser is 20 million is, instead of 100 million. And okay, fine. Again, that that 
it's possible. It's fine. It's just how much, like, we're talking about how many of these units of moon goo are actually consumed on a week-to-week -week basis and how much is there actual in moon supply. And you're going to add 20% to the supply chain. It has me worried. Just, it has me worried. And... I'm allowed to be worried That's as a, as a fake space economist. So with that long winded rant out of the way and sorry about uh, people watching this on YouTube after the fact, uh, there were, there was some great talk in the YouTube chat, which should be saved. If you go back to the live show, it should be saved on the thing. So feel free to go back and scrub and whatever. But um, I think it's important to talk about this stuff in a, in sort of a bigger way so that, no matter what market meta you're coming from, you get something from the show that if you're a producer or if you're a day trader or if you're just a PVP or trying to trying to like outsmart your dudes and make a quick buck, like I want to be able to serve all of you. So I'd rather teach you what to read in the numbers rather than just talk about raw numbers. All right, moving into fuel isotopes. Um, you, we know that last week I said that we were heading towards an equilibrium point. I believe that equilibrium point is 800. Uh, we saw that oxygen just kept on trucking up. So if you bought in, you still get to look like a genius. We still haven't seen the uh, Caldari blocks uh, cut, unfortunately. And that is a little bit concerning. And I, I really did expect this to, to crash a lot faster than, we, than we've seen. And we've just seen it stay steady and flat. Um, also, the one I was eating a bit of crow on last week when we broadcast, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually going to buy hydrogen isotopes just to be a smartass. And uh, it peaked up to 700 and is crashing back down again. Again, my target's 800. Uh, probably 750 is the way we'll end up being. Um, I do expect that the consumption for all these isotopes is going to get, uh, leveled essentially where, where we're going to be in the, the base load supply right now is driven by, driven by reaction towers running reactions on Caldari ice because you can fit two reactor, two reaction chains on one tower that goes away as soon as the new, as the new structures come out, because now your structure can use rainbow fuel. It doesn't matter what you're going to put in it as long as you're just getting it for the cheapest price uh, possible. Um, these isotopes will still be used in the moon goo reactions, which is great. I, I appreciate that, but I expect that to be leveled out across the board. Like I don't expect to see, uh, three parts of I, three parts of nitrogen compared to one part of everywhere, everyone else. Like that just doesn't make any sense. So I still think this is way too high and, and is in for a crash. So if you were holding on, I'd be selling, get your 900 and walk out and looking out across the block market. Um, I am glad to see that the margins have started to increase. Um, I was worried a few weeks back. I, I did my whole rant about stop building fuel blocks. They're not worth your time. And for Caldari blocks, absolutely. Get the fuck out of there. Like, burn your blueprints. Um, but everyone else is starting to actually see some, some stratification in here. Pointing to um, at least some amount of, of profit to be had. <clears throat> I still don't think um, I don't think most players should be in these markets um, because I like and I've explained this in a bit in, in longer detail before that I would expect anybody who is just coming into industry to be looking for more margin. I would expect anybody who's a veteran of industry to, to have something that makes more net margin and. Um, and I expect the only people who are serious about making fuel blocks in great quantities are getting cut deals along the way where they're getting cheap, cheap isotopes or cheap P, uh, PI materials. Um, or they're the sort of people who just don't know how to do accounting and are losing money and don't realize it. So 
Um, it's, it's getting better. Uh, this is a lot healthier than we've seen in a while. So my general advice sort of goes out the window that, that we're, we're wide enough to actually start talking about it. Um, but the, the, like, like we were back a few weeks ago and, uh, well, we were negative margin on some of these items. So yeah, just, just be careful. Watch your margins every week. Don't just build things blindly is the uh, moral of the story. Looking in on strontium, we see supplies climbing again. Nothing to say here. We were expecting, I was hoping that we'd, we'd slack a little bit more, but again, doesn't look like anybody's uh, gearing up for Sov War. And looking across to heavy water, we were seeing a downtrend in supply. Like, uh, so we see a, a lot of, uh, a big glut in supply because, uh, this stuff was fueling Rorks and then Rorks got nerfed and supply stayed strong. Um, I still think we're in for an upward price shift in the next few weeks, but I think that's a longer term trend than something spiky. So, oops. All right, moving on to our outliers. Let's start where we usually do in advanced materials. Uh, we saw a big spike across the board in moon mats uh, last week. Thanks to the the drilling changes announced, um, and the biggest movers for the last week have been these uh, meta materials. Uh, these are ones I do enjoy trading when I am active, but uh, they are extremely touchy. Uh, so as you'll see, the the margins get super thin and super wide. This is a feast and famine kind of market. Looking here at the photonic meta materials, same with plasmonic. Um, I kind of expected everyone to be in a rising tides moment uh, since we saw such spikes across the board last week. Um, and there's still a lot of hype in the moon markets, uh, but the prices have relative have basically set where they're going to be. Um, I was, I was expecting. So what I expected is that we'd see a big rush in everybody buying in, realizing that they overbought and a big rush out, uh, in one side of the revolving carousel and out the other. And I, we didn't end up seeing that. We're seeing people holding their bets. And there's probably opportunity to play again during the FanFest streams. So if you are stuck at home and looking to make a quick, make some iskies while you bitterly, bitterly uh, lament the fact that everyone else is having more fun than you, um, this might be the markets to be watching over the FanFest streams. But I expect it to be hot and fast, so. Next, PI materials. Uh, we said a few weeks ago that you should have jumped in ahead of the moon stuff. And uh, as we can see, prices are up. Um, this is an off-ramp, in my opinion. If you guys bought in for a short term, now is not a bad chance to get out. Uh do keep in mind that that if you are holding for the longer term, I would be holding for the actual release of the drilling platforms rather than just jumping out uh, here at here at a high point. It really has more to do with your liquidity than your returns. Um, the I'm just telling you, it's a good chance to cash out. It's not the chance to cash out. Uh, next, tactical destroyers have been interesting the last couple of weeks. We featured the Hecate last week, uh, spiking up a good 20 million a unit. Uh, and now we're seeing the Jackdaw see similar popularity. Um, not really sure why. I haven't seen anything in particular pointing to more tactical destroyer use. So this is a little bit weird in my books. Um, I know there were some messes with... Um, Oh, nano ribbons, but the, I'm just, this doesn't look, this doesn't look, uh, material cost driven. This looks meta driven. So, uh, if somebody wants to go throw comments about how I don't know how to fly ships anymore, uh, this would be the place to do it. Next, uh, the Onyx, uh, is, di is diving down and this one's actually a really decent buying opportunity. Uh, be very very cautious on your volume because we're talking about 14 or 15 sold a day. Uh, but this is again, the pattern, uh, I've talked about in the past where the, the, uh, 
we see a big spike. Industrialists rush in. They then end up having to eat their profits. And this is not a bad chance to buy in a few extra units um, as the as the prices as the prices fall. Now again, volumes are super thin on on the the heavy interdictors. So don't go gun ho. Don't buy like a hundred of these stupid things. Just be sure if you buy onesie twosie, you can be in and out, make your ten or fifteen percent, and look like a genius because this should this should snap back pretty quick. Uh, next, the Roke is doing something similar, but since it's not tech two, not the same, not the same, same. Uh, I think we're diving under, I think this is diving steeper than the material costs. So this might be a chance to buy in a couple of units again, only about 15 cell a day. So don't get, don't get too, too crazy on this stuff. Um, just interesting to see us dive so low. Next is uh, on the on the sh on the fitting markets. The energized adaptive nano membrane twos were super hot. Looks like somebody bought out the market, and prices have been high, but they should be trending back to equilibrium. Um, I'd be watching for a double a double dip here, where uh, we might see an extra spike into the weekend because uh, there may be some funniness about the the moon mats that that bubbles through but i don't know if there's enough there to really make your 10% uh it's a little bit of a gamble but if you wanted to buy up a few the market's pretty big so at the very least you could move it somewhere else and probably make probably make a quick buck uh and then i believe last one we're going to look at this week is the standard blue pill booster um love me some drugs as you guys all know and uh still a little bit worried with the news on the new on the new structures that uh reactions are going away which means drugs are getting are going to have to be rebalanced and haven't seen any news about drugs being rebalanced so the this is has me a little bit a Twitter, but uh, looks like somebody went completely nuts, so bought out the market, and Blue Pill is hot as hell at the moment. Moving on to our prediction review. Uh, looking at Dysprosium from last week, we saw the big buyout on on the news in the dev blogs. Uh, prices staying steady, supply staying steady. This is the sort of this is the thing I didn't expect is that I expected us to go down and back up to three million units. Uh, that million units didn't didn't uh, show up, so the prices stayed high. Um, I think there's chance that this could drop, so I would be I'd be putting some real opportunistic buy orders down in the 65k, maybe in the 60k range. Um, because if bad news comes over FanFest, again, we should see, we should see big opportunities to, to grab up cheap stock. Uh, but like, those are some super opportunistic orders. And I don't know if I'd want to have that money sitting in escrow more than I absolutely have to. Uh, Platinum was another weird one. We saw a big buyout cause, uh, everyone was looking at the top and the bottom. No one was looking in the middle and, uh, supplies are eking back thanks to thanks to pretty regular supply chains. Um, prices are tracking back down to the 5K mark. Uh, I'm wondering if we'll oversupply to the 10 million mark, but I seriously doubt it. I think we'll just stay steady where we are. And then last, I didn't cover this last week, but uh, we were talking about Anshars in Burn Jita spiking really hard when nobody else did. Um, they have... They have leveled off in price, but have been spiking up an extra, oh, almost a billion. But that's just because they're jump freighters and they're super expensive. So uh, still interested to see that Rayas just aren't really aren't really dragging out either with with all the other uh, changes. It it sure seems to me like Rayas are are kind of the kind of a flop at the moment, but. Uh, again, I don't have the I don't have the calculators open to really tell you what the real price of those things are. And rounding off our reporting, let's talk about violence. Let's talk about violence. Um, list looks pretty normal week to week as we expect. Uh, not a lot of difference uh, in the in the list of items. 
Um, a little hot on the materials this week, but I didn't see prices really spike on Macs, so uh, take them, take them or lose them. I might have just forgot to look at it, so if I got that wrong, do feel free to send me hate mail about it. Uh, next, hot systems, not a lot to talk about. Amamake, GE Tech 8, and Nenamalia are, are rounding out our picture this week. And zooming out all the way to the regional level, uh, Catch and Hematar is actually a little bit interesting this week. We usually don't see that, that chunk of space very active, but I want to say that's where Amamake is. Huh. See, I don't know my map. So again, geez, this guy doesn't even play this game. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everyone who tuned in live. This has been your Eve Prosper Market Show. I have been your host, Locke Fox. If you want to tune in live, all you got to do is remember Eve Prosper. Get subscribed to us on Twitch and YouTube, and we are on the air at 0300 Friday nights, Eve time. That's Thursday night U.S. time. Uh, do get followed. Do do get subscribed. The If you want to chat with us off the air, if you enjoy the show, if you think, if you want to send me a... Uh, Send me a piece of your mind. Uh, do so through our Discord. Links to join should be down in the doobly-doo below. Um, I am there. It's the very best place to get in touch with me. It's the best place to keep track of code changes and uh, price alerts and all the other market shit posting that goes on there. Um, I want to thank once again our editor, Christopher Mellon, who gets us edited for you YouTube guys every week so you guys can enjoy the show in a slightly less rambly version. And I want to thank our patrons who help keep this show on the air. It helps us keep servers running. It keeps our licenses paid. It makes this show possible. It means I don't have to do ads. It makes it easy for me to be here for you guys week over week. If you get value out of the show and you want to show us some appreciation, the Patreon is the very best place to do so at patreon.com slash Eve Prosper. And last, if you can't support us monetarily, that is completely fine. Absolutely understand. Do get subscribed, though. Do get your court mates to subscribe. Do get us shared around so we can keep seeing those numbers move up and to the right. Um, I do want to thank everybody who is subscribed on YouTube because we finally crossed the 3K mark. Um, and to be completely honest, I didn't think we'd hit that milestone. I, I know it's tiny. Uh, I know it's like I am I am minuscule in the in the land of youtube but the fact that we can gather 3000 space nerds to talk about a fake economy uh in in the hardest game the second hardest game let's let's give dwarf fortress its due um that we can get that many people that in this interested in such a weird topic just absolutely floors me so um I, I got to thank all of you guys who subscribe. Um, we're close to a thousand on, on Twitch and we're close to a thousand on Twitter, but getting 3000 on YouTube really does mean a lot. So, um, thank you everybody who tunes in. Thank you. Everybody who tunes in live. Thank you. Everybody who tunes in after the fact. Thank you for everybody who writes mean comments in YouTube. Uh, without you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you again, everyone. We will be back next week. Same, same channel, same time, just ahead of uh, FanFest. Be sure to keep your eyes on the news and go make a truckload of money. I've been your host, Lock Fox. This has been the Eve Prosper Show, and I will see you all next week. <laughs>